All right, in this video, we're going to be going over investigation 5.1.3. So, um, here a quick warm up, um, just a reminder on linear equations. If I want to find the height of the graph at a certain point, I can plug in that x value into the graph and it will figure out its height. So, let's go ahead and control C, control V, copy and paste. I want to figure out the height when x equals 4. So, let's replace x with 4. I know that 4 times 3 is 12, and we still have the minus 5. And 12 minus 5 is going to be 7. So notice that when x equals 4, the height of the graph, the y position of the graph, is going to be at 7. All right. Here's our warm-up 2. Uh, same as before, I'm going to copy and paste the equation. I want to figure out what y is when x equals negative 8. What's the height of the graph? What's y when I plug in negative 8? So let's switch out x with negative 8. Let's see. 3 times negative 8 is going to be negative 24. Um, everything is divided by 4 still. So plus 1. 24 divided by 4. Y is going to equal negative 6. 24 divided by 4 is negative 6. And I still have that plus 1. And negative 6 plus 1, those are going to cancel out, leaving me with negative 5. So notice that when x equals negative 8, the position or the height of the graph will be at negative 5. So um, the focus for this question is how can we sketch our parabola without a table? So um, in order to sketch a parabola, we need to think about how many points does it take to make a sketch? Um, does it take 1, 10, 50? Um, we're going to think about this question as we go through some of these problems. So if I have a parabola at 0, 5, can I make a sketch? The answer to this question is going to be no, because I could draw a parabola that looks like this, that goes through 0, 15. Or I can draw a parabola that's slightly to the side, so maybe like this. Right? I can draw a parabola that goes upside down and still goes to the point. So notice that just having one point doesn't lock the parabola into place. There are a lot of different ways of drawing a, a U-shape that goes through one point. So no, this is not going to be enough. Um, does having two points help us sketch a parabola? The answer to this is still going to be no. So again, I could draw a parabola going like this. Or I can draw a parabola with a shorter vertex, a lower vertex. Or I can draw a parabola that has a lower vertex like that. Or I can draw a parabola going the opposite way, facing downwards. So notice that just by having two points, um, I can still draw a bunch of different U-shapes or different parabolas that go through those two points. So two dots or two points are not going to be enough. And finally, if I have three points, can I draw a parabola? And for us, sketching a parabola will require at least three points. So I know that it has to go through these two points. And I know at least it has to be facing upwards in order to hit the three points. So it kind of locks the problem more into place. So after having these three points, I know that the problem is probably going to look like this. Um, I probably can't draw any other parabola that goes through the three points. Again, I can't draw one going upside down. can't draw one with a shorter vertex. So this is probably what the problem looks like, and I needed three points to sketch that. So uh, in the previous problem, you learned that if the intercepts of the problem, then you can sketch the problem while making the table. But how can you determine the intercepts of a problem from its equation? What's true about all y values for the x-intercepts? So remember that x-intercepts happens when y equals 0. And for y-intercepts, that happens when x equals 0. So again, we cross the x-axis when the height's at 0. And we cross that middle line, the y-axis line, when the x position's at 0. So keeping that we had to solve for our zeros, let's go and use that to figure out what the intercepts of these graphs are. So how can I figure out the y-intercept of the graph? So again, I know that for the y-intercept, the x position has to be 0. So let's go ahead and copy and paste. And every time I see an x, I'm going to replace that with 0. Okay. Let's see. 2 times 0 squared. Um, well, 0 squared is 0, so that's going to be 0. Uh, 5 times 0, that's still going to be 0. And I still have the minus 12. And 0 minus 0, um, that's just going to be negative 12. So my y-intercept, when my x position's at 0, my y-intercept is going to be at negative 12. So there's my y-intercept. And moving to the side, b3. Um, what equation are we going to need to solve in order to find the x-intercept? So remember, to find the y-intercept, x has to be 0. But to find the x-intercept, the height, the y part has to be 0. So 0 equals, and it's going to be this part. Control c Control v 0 equals that part. Okay, so the solution to this equation, 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0, are called the zeros of the function. 
And this is the point where the height or where the x-intercepts are at. The x-intercepts are called the zeros of the function. At this point, do we know how to solve a problem like this, a quadratic equation? Uh, for us, it's going to be no at this point. Um, here, when we have x squared, we don't have any strategies for isolating x when it's written as a polynomial. So, um, right now, we can't solve for x when it's being squared. So we have this exponent x squared plus 5x. Um, currently, we don't have any tools to solve this point, but um, over the next couple of pages, we'll start learning a strategy. So the equation we wrote in, both, we wrote in part B3 was called a quadratic equation. To solve it, you need to examine what we know about zeros. Study the special properties um, by studying this game. So we know that Nathan, Nancy, and Gaston are playing a game where Nathan and, sorry, Nathan and Nancy each think of a number, and then they give Gaston a clue about their numbers. Using the clue, Gaston must tell them everything he knows about their numbers. So, playing this game, Nathan, uh, Nathan and Nancy give them a clue where if you multiply the two numbers together, the result's going to be zero. So what conclusion can Gaston make? So we have Nathan thinks of a number, and Nancy thinks of a number, and when we multiply it, the answer ends up being zero. So Gaston can knows that Gaston knows that at least one of the numbers is zero. Because zero times anything is going to be zero. So in order for the answer to be zero, either Nathan's number is zero or Nancy's number is zero. One of their answers has to be zero, so that when you multiply them, the whole thing ends up being zero. Right? So disappointed that they came close to figuring out their numbers, Nathan and Nancy invited their third friend, Nadia, to make a more difficult question. This time, Nathan, Nancy, and Nadia are all thinking of a secret number, and when they multiply it, the answer will be zero. So what can Gaston conclude? So it doesn't matter if there are three people. Um, doesn't matter if there are three terms. At least one of them has to be zero in order to make the whole term zero. Expression zero. So at least either Nathan's number is a zero, Nancy's number is a zero, or Nadia's number is a zero. One of their numbers have to be zero in order for the whole thing to multiply to zero. So, does it matter how many numbers are multiplied? No. Um, this is called the product zero, or the zero product rule. Uh, what do you know at least one of them? If the product is zero, what do you know about at least one of the numbers? If the whole thing multiplies to zero, at least one of the terms, or at least one of the factors, have to be zero. So one part has to be zero and to multiply to make the whole thing zero. This is called the zero product property. So now that we know at least one part has to be zero, let's go ahead and rewrite this equation. So here we have the following quadratic equation. Uh, to factor it, uh, we can set up our box. So, let's, so we know that the a term and the c term 2 times negative 12 is going to be negative 24, x squared. The middle term goes on the bottom of our diamond problem, so 5x goes on the bottom of our diamond problem. So now we need to think, what are two numbers that multiply to 24, but add up to 5? Let's see, I know that 12 and 2, but I don't think there's a way of making that into 5. Let's see, we have 6x and 4x. I'm not sure 6x and 4x combined to 5. Let's try 8x and 3x. So I think 8x and 3x could work, but notice that the answer on top is a negative number, so we need one of these terms to be negative. Let's make 3x negative, and notice that 3 times 8 equals up to 24 on top, and 3 plus 8 cancels out to the 5x on the bottom. So they multiply to the top and add to the bottom. So I know that 8x and 3x are going to be terms inside of my box problem. And from here we can factor uh, what number is divides 2 but also divides 8. I can pull a 2x out of here. I know that 2x times x equals 2x squared. That makes this section. 2x times what equals 8x. I know 2x times 4 equals 8x. t times 4 is 8. And for this last section, uh, what number times, or x times what number equals negative 3x? That's going to be minus 3 x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And notice here for the third quadrant, the fourth quadrant, 
negative 3 times 4, that makes the negative 12 right here. So we know that each of these sections of the boxes multiply the E out of the parts. So now that we have our two base times height, we can rewrite the equation as 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. So we rewrote this expression to base times height. Again, base times height, 2x times x equals the 2x squared. Negative 3 times 4 equals the negative, sorry, negative 3 times x equals the negative 3x. Uh, 2x times x equals the, sorry, 2x times 4 equals the 4x. And then 3 times 4 is a negative 12. So now that we split this up into base times height, we know we can solve this equation by splitting up the zeros. Either this left part, either the 2x minus 3 has to equal 0, or the right part, x plus 4 has to equal 0. So let's solve this one. I know that if this whole part is 0, the whole answer is going to turn to 0. So how can I make 2x minus 3 equal 0? So let's go ahead and add plus 3 to both sides. All right, and then we can divide both sides by 2. So I know that x has to equal at least 3 over 2. So that could be one of my answers. Oops, sorry. Um, 3 over 2, 0. Okay, and let's go and solve the other equation. If I know that x plus 4 turns to 0, if this whole term turns to 0, 0 times anything will still be 0. So how can I turn x plus 4 into 0? I can subtract 4 on both sides. So I know the other x intercept has to be at negative 4, 0. All right, let's go and try another problem. So let's go and see. Now that we have these three points, we have negative 4, 0, 3 over 2, or, or 1.5. And we know the y is up at 0, negative 12. Notice that we have three dots. And after having three graphs, or three points, we can draw or, or sketch a parabola that goes through the three points. So here's my parabola that goes through the three points. So um, let's go and use the zero product property and rewrite the following equation. So let's see. I know that... The x term and the c, or sorry, the a term and the c term, x squared times negative 5 is going to be negative 5x squared. The middle part, the 4x, the b term, that's going to go on the bottom of my diamond problem. And now I think about what two numbers multiply to negative 5 but combine to 4. So I think 5x and 1x, these multiply to 5. But since the answer is negative 5, I need one of these terms to be negative. And let's make the negative term the negative x. So let's see, 1 times 5 equals negative 5. And negative 1 cancel out with 5 is 4. So notice that the two side numbers multiply to the top, and the two side numbers add up to the bottom. So I know that negative x and 5x, those are going to be the sides of my diamond, or my box problem, my area model. So let's go ahead and solve this. I know that x times x equals x squared. x times 5 equals 5x. And x times negative 1 equals negative x. And I can see for this last quadrant, negative 1 times 5 equals negative 5. So now that I split it up into base times height, I know that height times base has to equal an area of 0. So how do I solve for this? Again, I can do the left part, x minus 1 equals 0. Or this right half, this section here, has to turn into 0. So what number can I plug in that will make the left part 0? If I plug in 1, do you see that if I plug in 1 here, 1 minus 1 would be 0? So I know that one, one answer, one x intercept stuff, is that 0. The college bus for the Wild Museum is here. The college bus for the Wild Museum is here. And that's by the far side. So uh, the other one I can solve is by solving for um, the right-hand side. If this right-hand side turns to 0, I know the whole thing will be 0. So how can I make this part 0? If x equals negative 5, if I plug in negative 5 here, Notice that negative 5 and positive 5 will cancel out, and it will turn the right-hand side to 0. So the other answer would be at negative 5, 0. Okay, moving forward. So now that we know where these two answers are, um, let's go and see if we can figure out where the vertex is at. So we know the vertex is going to be in the middle of these two points. So let's see, what's right in the middle of these two points? It looks like negative 2 is right in the middle. And let's go and solve for what the vertex is. What's the height of the vertex when we're at negative 2? So let's plug in negative 2 for x. Let's see, negative 2 squared, negative 2 times itself is going to be 4. 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. And then we're going to minus 5. 
minus eight. That's four. So am I forgetting something? Four, negative four, negative eight, minus five. So y is going to equal, let's see, four minus eight is going to be negative four minus five. Oops, sorry, there's a dot. There we go. And then negative five and five more negatives is going to be negative nine. Okay. So the vertex is going to be at negative two comma negative nine. And if I know the vertex is right here, I can draw my parabola. I can draw my U shape. Curves down here, bounces back up, and crosses at the two x intercepts. So there's a sketch of my graph. So by having three points, the two x answers and the vertex, I can draw a parabola. All right, so let's go ahead and try rewriting this. Um, here, again, I have x squared and minus 6. So let's go ahead and set up our diamond problem. Let's see. I know that negative 6 times x squared, if I multiply the a and the c term, I get negative 6x squared. The b term, the term in the middle, is going to go on the bottom of my diamond problem. So now I need to think about what two numbers multiply the negative 6 but add up to 1. I know that 3x times 2x equals negative 6x, or times equals 6x. And in order to be negative, I need one of these terms to be negative. And if I make the 2 negative, notice that 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 2 plus 3, negative 2 plus 3 cancels out to get x. So now that I have my factors, I can go ahead and put 2x and 3x here on the diagonals. And now I can go ahead and figure out the factors. I can pull out x and x here x times 3 equals 3x, and x times negative 2 equals negative 2x. And for this last quadrant, notice that negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So I factor this by figuring out its base times height. Here's the height, here's the base, equals 0. And using the zero product property, I know that in order for the whole thing to turn to 0, either this part, the x minus 2 is 0, or the x plus 3 is 0. So either the x minus 2 equals 0, or the x plus 3 equals 0. So let's solve this first one. How can I turn this whole left turn to zero? If x equals two, I know that the left part's gonna be zero. If x equals two, the height's gonna be zero. And here to turn this to zero, x can be negative three. Notice that when I plug in negative three, negative three and plus three are gonna cancel out, leaving me at zero. All right, now let's go ahead and find the vertex. Uh, the vertex is gonna be right in the middle of these, which is, I think is gonna be at Let's see, negative 0 0.5. So let's go and figure out the height at x equals negative 0 0.5. Let's copy and paste our equation. And we'll replace x with negative 0 0.5. Again, we're trying to find our third point so that you can make a sketch. Let's see, negative 0 0.5 squared is um, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.5 minus 6. Let's see, 2.5 minus 5, that's going to be negative 0 0.25 minus 6. Oops, negative. And negative 0 0.25 and minus 6 is going to be negative 6.25. So my vertex is at negative 0 0.5 comma negative 6.25. Now that I have my three points, I have my two x-intercepts and my vertex. We're going to sketch a graph. Again, we have a point at negative 3, a point at 2, 0, and a third point at negative 0 0.5, negative 6.25. And with three dots, I can sketch a parabola. Okay, a few more pages. Um, how do we sketch our parabola without using a table? Um, we need three points to sketch a graph. Um, usually we use the x-intercepts as two points. Right? And then we need to find the third point. The third point by either the y-intercept or the vertex. Okay, so let's go and review. Um, compare these two equations. How are they similar and how are they different? So notice that the first one, equation one, is being multiplied, x plus two times x minus one, and equation two is adding. We're adding these here. Uh, what makes them similar? They're both using x, so they use the same variable. Uh, equation one, there are two answers, or sorry, equation one has two answers. And equation 2 only has one answer. There's only one term that when I add them up equals 0. But to be 0 here, I can either make the left 0 or the right 0. 
So let's go ahead and solve the equations. Let's see, x can equal negative 2, or x can equal 1. If I plug in negative 2 over here, do you see how the left turns to 0, so the whole thing will be 0? Or x can equal 1, so that the right turns to 0, and then the whole thing turns to 0. So to solve this, we can combine like terms, x plus x equals 2x, 2x plus 1, so this negative 1 half, right? So negative 1 half, if I plug this into here, it will add up to 0. So let's go ahead and solve each of these using the zero product property. So in order to turn it to 0, again, either this left part turns to 0, or this right part turns to 0. So to turn the left to 0, x can equal 2 because 2 and negative 2 are going to turn to 0. Or to make the right part 0, x can be negative 8, because negative 8 and positive are going to cancel out to 0. So I either make the left term, the left parentheses, turn to 0, or can make the right parentheses turn to 0. Let's see how do I turn this to 0? Let's see if x equals 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 9 is 0. And to make this 0, x can be 1. 1 cancel out with negative 1, so those are my two answers. So how do I turn x plus 10, the left part, to 0? x can equal negative 10, and that will turn to 0. Or for this part, again, I can plug in x equals 2.5. x equals 2.5. So 2.5 times 2 is 5, and 5 minus 5 is 0. And finally, for the last one, let's see. If I plug in x equals 7, that's going to turn to 0. Or, again, to make it negative 7, I can make x equals 0. 0 minus 7 is going to be negative 7. Which, seven, zero. And negative 7, oops, sorry. Oh, uh, this one only has one answer, excuse me. So if I plug in 7, 7 is the only way for this to turn 0. Sorry about that. And for the last one, let's see. If these are the x-intercepts, what's the x part of the vertex? So the middle of 3 and 5 is going to be 4. So where's my vertex? I can plug in 4 to all my equations. Oops. Then copy the right one. So let's plug 4 into all of our equations. All right. So I know if the vertex is at 4, let's plug in 4. y equals, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32. Um, negative 16 times 4 is going to be negative 64 plus 30. Let's see, 32 minus 64, that's going to be negative 32 plus 30. And these are going to cancel out to get y equals negative 2. So my vertex, the x part, is going to be at 4, and then the y part will be at negative 2. So here's the vertex of my two points. Um, so that's Investigation 5.1.3. Um, if you still have questions, please let me know.